Hello, I'm Jody Wolf. You're watching Expose. It is March 23, 2016, 1.103 p.m. Birmingham. Topic. I guess you heard about, and I heard it for the first time, called Top Illuminati Aid, or Boss, where David Rockefeller died at age 101. And it's eerie the way he looks so much like Searles. I mean... Guys look like twins. and um, But let me tell you a little bit of history about Rockefeller that you didn't know. And uh, again, I started working at a service station at age 14, actually 13, and uh, at a pure oil. And there were pure oil, standard oils, and there were uh, Sinclair's, Dinosaur, Go for stand, and I, well, I said standard oil, but there there were, were Texaco. There weren't too many brands, but there were a few. And um, San Ann, first, first, do it yourself where you pump your own fuel. All this is back in the uh, 1964. But me working at the first service station was 19. See, four and a half, nine, sixty, actually sixty-three when I went to work, or sixty-two when I went to work for the first one. Nineteen sixty-two, that is. And um, but anyway, before I I left it and then came back years later after working on the force, police force, I knew a lot about Standard Oil. I knew a lot about. Um, started out Sinclair, then went to Esso, then went to Exxon Mobil. And uh, keep in mind, Exxon Mobil, remember that. And then when Goffal sold out to BP Oil, Goffal sold for a record breaking. This is back in 1981. A record breaking thirteen billion dollars to date. That was the biggest purchase of anything to ever occur. And BP Oil bought Guff Oil and gave them five years to remain Guff, and then two four-year options to remain Guff. It remained Guff two years, and BP decided they didn't like Guff anymore, so they yanked the rug out from under them. And I'm getting to a point. And then Exxon, back then it was Esso when this happened. Hadn't even become Exxon yet. They got big like BP. And uh, so they were broken up just as BP was broken up. They got too big. Made a split. And what did BP do? They went to California, bought up all the mobile stations out on the West Coast. And then when Exxon started buying up stores, well, they were buying them from BP, Exxon Mobil, but they were BP's first. But let's back up now. 40 years from that time, 40 years from 1950, and then go there. You had, and I don't, I, I, I don't have a, well, I do have a name, but I'm not 100% sure of it, so I'm not going to give it. But in a certain town in Ohio, there were two men that, that began all companies, started all companies. One of the two was a Rockefeller. And, and David or Nelson, I don't know. I don't recall. But they started, one of them started one company, the other started another company. But for a while, both fought over the same name. Make a long story short, Rockefeller swindled this other company out of their oil 
company, out of their business, and lied to them, and they crashed and burned. And I, and I have all that history, have every bit of it, because I found it in, interesting in 19... Um, 68, 69, I was 18 or 19, found it interesting, really, and I kept the paperwork because I was working at a Gulf Oil at that time. And I'm in Texaco, then I moved to Gulf, and they were with the same man, and they were fixing to be bought out, of course, but they kept holding off and not letting it happen. So I went from Texaco to Gulf, and Gulf was the one fighting against not being bought out, but Things happened and they were bought out. And um, so the Illuminati chief, dead at 101 years old, uh, going to his new home, and I don't think he's going to like it. And again, the the looks of the Searles and, and Rockefeller, they look like twins. And... Um, but there's a hundred like him that'll take his place in the Illuminati ranks. But let me tell you what Rockefeller did. When he started Standard Oil, he changed the name, or rather he split when he took this other man's oil company from him. And then they left one of them at Standard Oil and the other he called Standard Oil of Ohio, or Soho. And then in the next several years, 10 or 12 years, he had expanded and just went across this country. And at a, in a time, he ended up in California. Standard Oil of California, or SoCal. And um, if you go and look, Read that history about him and then his relationship with the Erie Canal. And I'm talking about, yes, sir, this man at a point in time controlled what traveled the Erie Canal. Look, he came up fast, and as he came up, he controlled things. They didn't do what he wanted. He, he put them out of business. And read the story about how he kind of navigated through the Erie Canal, pulling his oil up to New York, using mules, pulling these barges. Hey, it happened, guys. I'm telling you. And, um, but that's a, in, in a nutshell, you know, that, that's kind of, That's kind of how he got started. And of course, J.P. Morgan, he started J.P. Morgan. People don't know that, but Rockefeller was the, was the original J.P. Morgan company. And, um, but he was friends with uh, this gentleman and they would often meet on an island. And I'm not sure if it's the same island that George Bush the, the fathers, the grandfather, and then the sons that continued to meet on this island and, and started the Paris Club. But they're all in the same bed and um, or will be soon for the rest of them. Rockefeller destroyed many large companies, made many large companies close their doors. He built across the street from his first competitor, then underpriced him so bad that it put him out of business. And not only one store, at every store that the man had. This is what jobbers will do to bring money in for themselves. They will sign a contract. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you it happened to me. I bought a raw pre piece of prime property in 1993, bought it outright, paid for it. Highway 31 and Valladale Road 
one half mile off Interstate 65, but a very busy intersection. I bought the corner. And the man that I signed a contract with, Texaco, I'll tell you his name, Higginbotham. Promised me he was a good old Christian boy and he would never do anything to hurt me. He said, I own the lot down the street and I was going to build a store there one day, but I promise you I'll wait six years before I do. I was not open two years when Higginbotham opened up and he opened up 15 cents beneath my price and I couldn't do anything about it. And then I came down with him six cents to meet him and I couldn't go below that because he controlled my price. And then he dropped six cents more. He remained 12 cents under me until it put me out of business. That's how they do. And he's a good old Christian boy. Yeah, I believe that. Just like I believe Rockefeller was a good old Christian boy. And this man, his day's coming. I promise you that. I told you the name. I have nothing to hide from you. It is the truth. This is how these companies do. I was in Lake Tahoe, my wife and I and some other friends skiing in Heavenly Valleys and Squaw Valley. Heavenly Valley splits. Part of it is in Nevada, part of it is California. Squaw Valley, it all is in uh, Nevada. That's where the movie stars go, but we didn't see any. And I can't tell movie stars upside down because I stayed on my back more than I did on my feet. But on the way back, of course, we took a, a ride back down to Reno, and I passed a place called Minute Lube, M-I-N-I-T, Lube, I got thinking about that, and it really worked on me. So two years later, I built the second quick oil change in Birmingham, and it was called Fast Lube, F-A-S, and I signed up with Quality Oil to purchase the oil, although I already had service stations. Well, my brother was transferred to Augusta, Georgia. He said, hey, there is one of these quick oil changes up here, and it has quality oil on it, not fast. That's really better. Shouldn't have fast. That's my name, F-A-S. He said, and he kept me in touch. He said, you not believe what happened. He said, a minute lube moved in across the street from him, and I've been getting more change at quality oil. And I asked guys, why did he do that? He said, that man's been trying to buy me out for three years, and I kept telling him, no. He said, well, you'll regret it. So he opened up a new one across the street, and he cut the oil change price in half until this man that owned Quality Oil was out of business. And then Quality Oil, knowing this shenanigans goes on, in Birmingham, they did the very same thing to me. They signed a contract with FAST Lube two years after I did. But yet, I didn't go and have mine registered under trademark or copyright. Quality told these people, said, you can go do that. They did. And then I got a, a letter from a lawyer. You need to change your name because your place, you're using the name of another business. I said, wait just a minute. They came two years after me. I've had my name up and it's documented. Did you get a copyright? That's all he said. Well, we stayed the way it was. We didn't move, but I did sell it later. Look, people that's got money are itching to put other people out of business. Rockefeller, and then you have this, you can buy a lung card to play golf. It discount rates around the country. You know that. You've heard it. And then you you pay whatever you pay for the card. I don't recall. I bought them every year. It goes to heart research. Cancer research. But yet, Rockefeller had one of his men 
in California and Sacramento in 1932, where Royal Rife had a cure for not only cancer, but for heart disease. Rockefeller helped put Royal Rife out of business. I just want you to know how good this man is, Rockefeller. Like him if you want, but I know where he'll be one day. Just wanted to bring you up to date on good people. Jody Wolf Exposed.